Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a video today about cleaning out my hamsters um, just to show you how I do it because um, I had to clean them out anyway so I thought um, why not do a video on it. Um, so um, it's been about two weeks since I last cleaned them. I normally clean them um, or try to clean them like every week. But um, sometimes if I'm a bit busy, I won't get round to it. So I would never leave it more than two weeks. Um, because um, obviously you can see the condition of the cage. Um, it's not too clean. So like down here you can see um, they've kicked some of their sand out. And um, they use that as their potty. So it's... Um, it's not that hygienic to be honest to kick it around but um, it normally only gets this bad light towards when I need to clean it um, I change the sand anyway um, like every other day um, just to keep it clean and fresh and you can also see like in this corner where they've been going to the toilet so it's a bit like the care fresh is a bit discoloured and it does smell a bit, so <clears throat> it's definitely ready for a clean out. So now they're in the little box that I put them in when I clean them out. Um, it's just like a small like plastic um, storage box. And um, for these kinds of hamsters, and um, like the smaller dwarf hamsters, um, you don't really need like it to be very high because they can't jump at all really um so they'll try and like get get over it but they won't be able to so um just want to clean them out i normally put like um this tube in for them which is actually in their cage anyway but they like to sort of like hide in it <clears throat> they like to have a place to hide um, and i'll sometimes just put like a fresh sun bath in for them um, <clears throat> or like I'll put this log in as well because this is wooden so I can't wash that and they just like a place to hide because they're in like um, they're like sort of out in the open take that bedding out oops there we go so they're still quite shy at the moment um, Robbers Robsky hamsters are like notorious um, for being hard to tame, but where is he? They're um, they are quite hand tame, but they um, they can still nibble quite a bit. Oh. So I am a bit wary of that. Um, my boyfriend did actually pick um, one of them up. Um, it was quite a few months ago now actually and um, I think he, he picked him up when he didn't want to be picked up and he was actually like hanging on to his finger. So, but they've never done that to me. They've only ever like nibbled me. Um, so I can. I'll just show you quickly the few seeds. I can, if I put my hand down, they will come onto my hand. But that's about as much as they'll do. They won't really let me pick them up. So what I'm giving them here is just black sunflower seeds, um, which I give to my gerbils. Um, they're having a little fight now. He's come to beg for some. Um, this is one of the treats that I give them and they can actually take quite a few off me at a time and put them in their pouches but I try not to give them too many because they are quite fattening. Um, okay so now I'm going to leave them in here for a bit and just go on to clean them. So I just want to show you um, what they've done to their wheel. This is what happens quite a lot. <laughs> 
it's really gross like I think they pee on it and it's obviously it looks to me like it's a bit of this the um bathing sand is stuck to it as well and it gave like a horrible colour and it absolutely stinks so this happens um like every few days actually it gets really dirty like the gerbils wheel will never get like this um so what I'll do is I'll unclip it from the cage and I'll just give it um a quick wash just to get rid of the smell and clean it all up um, for them every few days but this is what it's got like at the moment and just empty the food bowl and the potty into the cage so if I remove this I've got to give it all a good wash then I'll just show you this is where they sleep in this little house and I'll just show you what a state this gets into if I can open it and show you, it does get quite smelly because I don't actually put care fresh in here, I just put this like white bedding but they mix it in with their care fresh so yeah, and that's just like the cheap pets at home white bedding so here you can see and um, I'll bring it to the light, it's lots of like seeds in here that they've stored away. Um, it's not too bad actually this time, so it's the black sun fair seed there. Um, but normally it's filled with like poos. And it's not really that many, so they've obviously been going out somewhere else. So I like to give them quite, quite a bit of care fresh so they can dig around, because uh, robins do like to dig. Um, um, I'll just empty that out so now I'm just going to go and wash them so I'm actually doing this in my bathroom today just because it's a lot easier to film it um, and I can just wash all the things in the sink um, <clears throat> I know a lot of people don't tend to like wash the cages out um, but I do I've always done it and I am actually thinking of getting like a cage cleaner spray um, as I've never had them so if anyone uses them and uh, recommends like a good brand to use or anything um, I'd be really interested to know which one would be good to get um, what I've always used is very liquid I use this really sparingly and I just use it to make the water so you pee um, I know a lot of people will say don't use fairy liquid because it does contain on the back it does contain perfumes I just make sure that I rinse everything really well and I've used this since the beginning with my pets and it's been perfectly fine they've never had a reaction or anything um, but yeah, I'm definitely thinking of changing to the spray because it's a lot more pet friendly and um, it's obviously got to be better. So I just put the plug in and I'm just going to run like, some quite hot water just because that is going to kill all the bacteria. And so to start with, I'm going to clean all of the bits that come inside of it and then I'm going to clean the actual cage, so they're down here um, and I'll clean that tube in a minute. I'm having like some sort of squabble. Um, okay, so <coughs> ouch, that's burnt me. That's just really nice and just past warm. <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this in it and mix it all in. Okay, 
then I'm just gonna start with the wheel because it's really dirty. And oh, something I've forgotten is this brush that I have for them. <clears throat> um, I've got lots of different brushes. I've got the one which has detergent in, and just this one, which is an old washing up brush. And I'm just going to scrub it. Get those little bits out. So I've rinsed that thoroughly, and um, so there should be no residue of the washing up liquid left on it. And I'm just going to dry that in a minute. So I'm going to move on to the next things, like the house needs a really good clean. And um, the only thing that, um, that I will say when you're washing things out, um, just make sure you can leave them to soak for a bit as well if they are um, really dirty. But just make sure that you do dry them properly because you don't want it to be damp for your pet because it could make them ill. So just leave that to soak for a bit and then I'll show you how I clean out the actual cage base. Um, next, what I'll do is I'll take this out and um, what we want to do is just want to empty the whole thing out into a black bin bag. So, make sure it's underneath. And it's better if you can do it with two hands. So, and take it out and um, so it's really good if you can have like um, a drawstring bag like this one because um, they're quite strong as well and you don't want to get a weak a weak bin bag because <laughs> if it gets a hole in and breaks and um, you're a bit stuffed really with stardust I'll just put that to the side for now. Um, when I actually clean out the big gerbil tank, it normally takes two full bags like this. Um, so that's that empty. Um, now I'll normally do this in my kitchen sink and it's a lot bigger than this one. Um, I could also do it in the bath, but um, just to show you how I would do it, I'm going to show you in here. And this is like the tiniest sink in the world, so <laughs> hopefully it will work out. Um, so what I normally do, I get a bit of the water and I'll like swish it around so it gets to all the different areas. And I'll scrub it and then make sure I do the same and just rinse it thoroughly and then dry it really well. Now that it's really well coated and you can see you might not be able to see on camera. I've given it a good scrub so it's starting to lather up and this will just get all the little um, encrusted bits of food and sand off. So then I'll just give it a good rinse and dry it down. So that's the cage all clean and dried. And I'm now going to fill it up with some Carefresh. Um, I'm going to use Carefresh Ultra this time, um, just because I wanted to change from the blue. So I thought it'd have a nice white cage this time. So, oops. so spread it out nice and evenly. So it's not too deep, but it's deep enough to do a bit of digging and um, it's going to be really nice and soft for them. So items that I've cleaned over here, this is their little house and I'm just going to give them 
some different bedding. So this is just natural, made from natural paper fibres. And I'm going to give them... I normally have to open it in here because it is so messy. So just push some in there. And I like to put the house... Make a little... For it. I like to put the house in the corner so that they can get a bit of privacy when they go to sleep. So it normally it will still clip down, but because of the ridge in the house, it's just a bit wobbly until you put the actual lid on. And um, the next thing is I put their tunnel back in. So I removed all these parts while I washed and cleaned them. Um, it has to go in a particular way so that the wheel doesn't hit it, it's not me, something like that. So they've got like an entrance near the house. And then to put the wheel in, I've um, just added some fresh sand. Um, it's not actually sand, it is chinchilla bathing sand. So it's more um, coarse and sand. Um, so they use that as their potty. They normally just instinctively go to the toilet there. How are they getting on? Um, and um, I've added some carefresh up here as well, just so it's a bit softer on their tummies. Um, because Gus Gus did once have um, this this one here is Gus Gus. This one. <laughs> He keeps still, and um, the one nearest, and he had like a little red patch on his tummy once, and it's gone now completely. It was just I think where he'd rubbed against here, um. So I like to put a bit of care fresh just to keep it a bit softer for them when they walk around. Um. Then the next thing is the food bowl which I was to clear a little space for it. There we go. And what I normally use on an everyday basis is the normal hamster mix. So that's um, just for any normal hamster, like Syrian hamsters could eat that. Um, cause if you can see it's got like larger pieces. And then I'll mix it up with some dwarf hamster mix. So that's a bit smelly as well <laughs> because it's got like dried mealworms in, but not actually that many. Um, and that's like, I don't want to touch it, it's like a finer seed. Um, so they like both really. They used to just be on the larger one, but then I thought, you know, why not get them um, smaller seeds because they are smaller hamster. I think people forget like how small they actually are. These are actually the world's smallest hamsters. So it's the smallest species of hamster and so they've obviously have different needs. Um, so don't forget to put that back in. Um, it normally goes there somewhere. I think. And, excuse me. They both decided to go on the bridge now. And I need to get it. <laughs> Just going to have to encourage him off. Come on. There we go. That was a bit of a trick. Um, so I just put that there so that they can like, go, go under it while they're eating um, and also I'm going to put this in I think. So that's the feed done and then I've added half um, a dog chew um, which is broken into half, two halves um, because they're a bit big for them to 
um, hole underneath and also just spoke enough um, a third of that treat. Um, I will put a foraging mix in for them probably in the morning but just because they've got enough treats for now that should do them. So they're back in the bedroom again and they're all done and ready to go and Buzz was eating his treat then. They really loved them, it was a really good buy. And um, so I put some, the last thing I did was put some fresh um, drinking water in for them, which I do every day anyway. And um, so I like to make sure it's like really cold for them. Um, and as you can see, they're really happy. So that's the end of the cleaning video. Sorry if it was a bit long, I did try to cut it. So it would be a bit shorter for you. And he's having a zumba. So they're all nice and smelling nice and clean now. I think it looks really nice with white as well. Okay, hope you enjoyed watching. Bye.